How's it going? Welcome back. So I am off camping again. It's Saturday and I'm down at a campsite a little bit further west than where I'm based in Cornwall and I'm booked in here for two nights. Might stay three though, we'll see. Uh, it's very beautiful. The weather forecast is appalling for the whole weekend so that's not ideal but I've got all my wet weather gear so I don't care. So in this video I'm going to show you what I eat on a low carb diet for a two, three, four day camping trip. Um, fortunately two of the meals that I pre-prepped I've left in the fridge. I did stop at the farmers market and the supermarket on the way here just to stock up on other things so I have bought replacement meals which is a bit of a shame because I was really looking forward to that feta salad. Johnny, feel free to dive into that one, my darling. So the purpose of this camp is for you guys. Isn't that lovely of me? I go camping for you. I'm all heart. So I'm making this video for you, but I'm also planning to make three other recipe videos that all require the use of a slow cooker. And because I need, obviously, electricity to run my slow cooker, I figured I'd just go and find a site where I can hook up for a few days, just bang out those recipes. The van is going to smell amazing by the end of those three days. So I've got three days and I'm planning to make four videos. I have no idea how this is going to go. Uh, hopefully it works out. I've got to be very organised to pull that off and I'm not the most organised of sorts. So we'll see. Anyway, it's now one o'clock. I haven't had any lunch. I'm ravenous. So I should be eating the lovely feta salad that's currently sat in my fridge at home that I forgot. Instead, I bought a stir fry mix from the supermarket. So I'm going to cook that up with some smoked mackerel. So for the first meal I'm going to pop, I don't know, a teaspoon maybe of coconut oil into my frying pan and I picked up this bag of mushroom stir fry from the supermarket. I'm actually really hungry so I might cook all of that up but I might not eat it all. So I'm just going to get my coconut oil melted. Rookie error, I should have waited for my pan to heat up more than that but what can I say, I'm hungry. Now, like I say, I didn't actually plan for this meal, so I don't have a huge amount of flavour to add to this. Luckily, I always carry a bottle of soy sauce in the van. And I'm going to hit my spices up. Because I don't have a sink in the van and because smoked mackerel stinks, I am actually going to use these gloves. Because what I need to do is take the skin off and remove the bones from these fillets. And once you get that smell on your hands, it's really hard to get rid of it. You can absolutely eat the skin, so don't feel that you have to try and take it all off, but I personally only like fish skin when it's crispy. So this bit I am just getting rid of. Because the fish is already cooked, I just want it to kind of heat through a little bit. And obviously that means it's not going to stink the van out quite as much as cooking raw fish from scratch would. There we go. Meal number one, done. Now this whole bag of vegetables comes in at just over 12 grams of carbs, which is pretty high. And I'm putting that down to the carrot in here. So I'm gonna try and eat around the carrot as much as possible. This is really good. And the pepperiness of the mackerel, along with the chili flakes that we've used, this has actually got quite a punch to it. It's a really nice little meal. Cheers. No rest for the wicked. Now I've finished my lunch, I've had a little clean up. I've still got the washing up to do, but what I wanna do first is get the next recipe video up and running because I'm gonna be cooking it in the slow cooker and it needs at least four hours. And it is currently 
quarter to two so it's going to be dark by the time it's cooked which is a bit of a shame but what can you do so let me get this next recipe nailed and then you'll see the end results tonight because that's what i'm going to be eating for my dinner <laughs> So it's about half past three now. I'm sat here uploading data from memory cards and from my laptop to an external hard drive because I'm rubbish at doing that. I've just had a black coffee. I'm about to have some macadamia nuts because I'm not hungry, but I'm bored. And this is bored eating. Anyway, back to backing up. When I was camping last week in Gloucester with the guys from the whole YouTuber meetup thingy, um, Damon very sweetly gave me this lamp. Now it's only a cheapie, I don't remember how much he said it was, I'm sure he'll let us know in the comments below, but it's so cool. Now I've actually put batteries in here, it takes four AAAs, but you can also run it off USB as well, which is really handy. Now the beauty of this thing is you can press and hold and you'll get this night light, which is just enough light if you need to get up in the night and you don't want to disturb your other half or if we turn that off you can always also use this lamp and it's got three different brightnesses how cool is that regular viewers will know i have no leisure battery in here i haven't quite got round to sorting the electrics out because i really like myrtle as she is quite frankly but i'm going to fit it onto the ceiling and i've got um i did try with those sticky you know those sticky spongy things <laughs> I did try but it fell off yesterday so instead I'm going to use some of this which is that like industrial strength velcro um, and this is the stuff that I've used on the back of my cushions to stick them to the wall it's really good stuff I'm very impressed with this so I'm just going to cut some off stick some onto the ceiling and then pop a little piece on the bottom of here as well and just see how we get on with that <laughs> oh my god I turned everything on moment of truth oh yes might actually come in useful for filming as well <laughs> awesome thank you damon i'm going to be real interested to see what this lighting setup looks like when i'm editing this video apologies if it's horrible but we kind of have to work with what we've got right right i'm going to get back to miss sprouts back to my zombies and I'll pop the camera back on in about an hour and we'll check that stream. So damn good. That was not a very good night's sleep. Right, I need to get myself ready, then I need to clear the van up, and then I need to make coffee. Hopefully that will help the day ahead. <laughs> Excuse the hair, I've tried to tame the mop, which is kind of always kind of a bit of a waste of time when I'm camping, but hey. So now I'm all caffeinated up, I do feel much better actually and I'm much more with it. So I need to get my second slow cooker recipe on today which you will see in a few weeks time. This is um, pepper pot stew and again it's a recipe that's been on my blog forever. So I need to tip out last night's beef stew that is solidified <laughs> with a nice thick layer of beef fat on top which I'll sort that out at home. I'm just going to tip my stew into this Tupperware tub and then I'm going to take this home and I can shoot it 
like reheat it and shoot it tomorrow because I don't have the energy or the props here to do a decent job of it. And seriously, that is so damn tasty that I want it to look beautiful. God, it actually looks like cat food right now. So that's that done. Now I'm not going to bother washing this pan out because I'm about to cook beef in it again. So when you next tune into my video and you see the slow cooker pepper pot stew, you'll know why I'm starting with a dirty slow cooker. Hopefully it won't show too much, but it's not going to give anyone food poisoning. So I'm not at all fussed about that. And if I wipe the top, then hopefully people won't even think it is dirty. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go and put that in the cool bag. And then I'm gonna film this next video. Let me just show you the list that I'm working from. So this is the video you're watching today. So this is the whole what I eat when I'm camping video. This is the one that I did yesterday, that beef and ale stew. So that's all the shots that I wanted to get for that video. Honestly, nightmare. And this is today's for the pepper pot stew. And I really wanna get a walk in, but I'm not sure looking at the forecast and what I've got to get done before the rain comes in, I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to actually get that walk in, which is very sad because I've never been to this little area before and I've never done that walk and I'd really like to do it. But if I stop talking, then perhaps I'll have time. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna make some slow cooker bread, in, which is gonna be quite exciting. I've made this before, it worked out incredibly well. Who knew you could make bread in a slow cooker? So I've got to do that one tomorrow morning and then we're packing up and I'm going to take you to 15, um, Jamie Oliver's 15 at Watergate Bay in Cornwall because my friend and I, Liz, who you met recently, we're going to um, it's like a food panel with some top ranking British foodies. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. I'm very excited to see what is discussed in our current political and broken food system. I'm really looking forward to that. So just to give you an idea of how full my head is right now and how much I've had to plan ahead in terms of ingredients and stuff and I mean it's no wonder I've had a headache for the last two days. Am I right? <laughs> right recipe number two is now on so I'm gonna get myself ready and hopefully get out for that walk but I do need to check oh my gosh the sun's coming out. Did you see that? I said the word walk and the sun came out. That's cool. Um, I do need to check the forecast and timing, but this puppy is now set to be on for at least four hours. So I've got loads of time from that point of view. I'm just very aware of the wet weather coming in. So we shall see. Oh, and I haven't had any breakfast. Apparently there's a cafe down in Portreath. So my second recipe for the day is in the bag. I've just added the spinach, which is the last final part of this delicious pepper pot stew. When I got back from that walk, oh my God, the van smelled incredible. I'm gonna dish me up now. You guys, this sauce is so good and it smells delicious. You must try this one next time, either if you're at home or you're on an electric hookup. It is absolutely delicious. I tell you a secret, I had that lovely walk down to Portreath. It was really lovely, really, really lovely. Loads of people out, there's a, like a tramway, a really flat tramway. Loads of people out running and cycling and loads of activity going on. It was really good fun. Portreath itself, never been to before. Really lovely place. Really interesting harbour. I've. It's. It always amazes me the different harbour kind of designs there are around Cornwall. Obviously, I know they have to fit a harbour into the natural landscape, but it's really interesting how they do that and the shapes that they make. And yeah, that was real interesting. Anyway, the point of this story is that I actually got a taxi back from Portree back to the campsite because I'd had it and I was starving and I knew that this was waiting for me. <clears throat> so please don't judge too harshly. Just quickly docking back in to say, but I'm going through this beautiful pepper pot stew and I'm thinking, right, I'll just push all the potatoes to one side like I did with the carrots yesterday. 
and I've realised there are no potatoes left. It was a floury potato that I've used and it's just kind of exploded and that's what's made this sauce so thick and delicious. So I am officially eating potatoes right now. So if you're low carb in it, don't do this recipe or use like a waxy, like a new potato instead because they won't like just break down. They will like hold their integrity. So sorry, low carbers. I think I might have failed you on this one. Okay, as promised, I'm now gonna make waffles. I've only just eaten my pepper pot stew, so I'm certainly not hungry, but I'm gonna make them because the light is going and I figure I'll just have them cold for tea tonight. So I've got my waffle maker on. Now I'm using an electric one, but you can, I believe, get ones that you use on gas and you flip over, kind of like a ridge monkey kind of thing. Don't know, haven't used them, but I think I've seen them on the internet. Anyway, mine is on um, and you've got to preheat it. So when it's preheating, it's orange. And then when the green light comes on, we're ready to rumble. So put that to one side. In here, I have grated cheese. I think this is cheddar. I buy it in big bags from Booker's because I batch make these. I get through a lot of these. This is one American cup, or I think that's 130 grams. If I'm wrong, I'll pop it on the screen. Now I keep those big bags of grated cheese in the freezer. So this obviously has defrosted. I do generally make it with frozen grated cheese though, because I'm lazy and I just shake it out of the freezer and it works. I'm sorry I'm having to duck to speak to you today but I couldn't be bothered to get the big tripod out. I'm feeling very lazy after my walk and now my stew and I just want to sleep but I'm not going to. I'm gonna make you waffles because I'm nice like that. Right I need a fork or you need a fork too. So you also need an egg. These are laid by my girls. Now I prefer a small egg for this. The smaller the better. You can certainly use big eggs but it makes it more eggy, <laughs> like more, not even omelette -y. You'll see this goes crispy, cheesy, good enough. This is amazing. It still tastes good with big eggs but I happen to prefer it with the little dinky ones. Well that's an interesting way to break an egg isn't it? Ugh. These are from my hens and they're getting old and their shells are getting really, really thin. Bless them. Okay, so one egg, one cup of cheese and then a sprinkle of garlic powder. You can really use any seasoning or flavouring you like. I've tried it with plain salt, salt and pepper before, but my absolute favourite is the garlic powder. So that's what I'm bringing you today. Then you just mix all of that together and you're gonna get a really weird looking dry kind of cheesy mixture. Use a big egg, this will look much wetter, obviously. Oh, I'm gonna have to get the tripod out, aren't I? Damn you waffles. Hang on, how much mess can I make here? I've got pops of stew cooling everywhere and all sorts. Okay, all I need is a little piece of the tripod. Oh, crikey. Hang on, hold your horses. See, that's all I needed to fix that onto the tripod. Right, come here. Come here, lad. Deeply annoyed because it seems that I didn't switch the camera back on for filming the second part of that. So, use your imaginations. I mixed it all together. <laughs> I put it half in each side and kind of smoothed it out, Whack the lid down, set the timer for 15 minutes and then take a chill pill for being such a twit. So timer, 15 minutes and then dinner will be served. Not that I can actually eat a morsel right now, honestly, stuffed. That's one thing I hadn't thought about, about cooking this in the van. I normally cook this at home in the kitchen but it does indeed put a lot of steam out into the atmosphere. So that might be a problem in your van. However, on a nice sunny day, obviously open your doors and windows to let that steam escape. If you've got curly hair, it'll be like getting a free perm because you'll boof right up. The rain has actually backed off again, strangely, right now. So I'm gonna open that side door up and try and get rid of as much of this moisture as possible. Anyway, 15 minutes, see you in a mo. Okay, we are cooked, 15 minutes has passed, and there we are, they look like weird alien life forms right now. Look at that underneath, delicious and crispy. I'm just gonna pop them over here onto this uh, chopping board with some kitchen roll on. At home, I would be popping these onto a cooling rack, you know those wire baking cooling racks you get? And then I unplug the machine, 
I'm going to tip this up on its side and you're going to see quite a bit of oil come out. And I'm just going to let that soak into that kitchen roll and then obviously this will need a wipe down too. You'll also see there's quite a bit of grease in there and I like to do this while the machine is still warm. I just get some more kitchen roll and just wipe down those ridges and that brings off all those little crusty bits of cheese that happen to be stuck on there and it mops up all that grease too. Much easier to do when it's still warm than if you let the fat cool down. Now clean up of these machines isn't hideous but it's not the most fun you're going to have in the kitchen let's be honest. So I tend to batch make these probably four or six or even eight waffles at a time. Then I let them cool and then store them in the fridge like in a large Tupperware airtight tub. What you're going to see now is as they cool, because I used a small egg, they become crispy, crunchy goodness. Once they've stored in the fridge for a few hours, that crunch goes and you've just got soft waffles. But when they're like this, they're amazing. If you put a little bit of bacon in between and then dunk in a tiny bit of ketchup, low sugar preferably, they are so good. Because they're made of cheese, I don't like having cheese in them, it's just complete overkill, but they work really, really well with any meat, really. I haven't found a meat that doesn't work with it yet. So there you go. As much as I want to dive in, I'm way too full, so I'm going to get back to my zombies, I'm going to let them cool, and I'm going to have them for my tea tonight with a little bit of crispy bacon in between. <laughs> There's bits of waffle everywhere. They're so crispy. It's time for some hot chocolate. I've got a real sweet craving, but I don't have anything sweet on board. So I have brought some unsweetened almond milk. And I have some 95% dark chocolate, which is incredibly bitter. But when mixed with the creaminess of the unsweetened almond milk, it actually produces quite a nice kind of sweet kind of tasting hot chocolate. It's obviously it's not going to be like a mug of Cadbury's, let's be honest, but then I don't drink that stuff anyway, so it's good. It's all going to be good. So just break a few lumps of that into there and let's get the heat on. I'm just going to bring that up to a quick boil, or just under a boil actually, just get it nice and hot and then I shall get a whisk in. Oh, this smells yummy. I reckon we're good to go. And just because I can't have any sugar in my hot chocolate doesn't mean I can't have a cheeky little tipple. It's not like I'm driving anywhere tonight, so... Hopefully, it will help me have a better night as well. <laughs> now that hits the spot. Ah, good morning, coffee has settled in. I've had a little tidy up, although you wouldn't know, it's still a ruddy bomb site in here. I've just got my next recipe video set up but I just wanted a quick chat with you first because I'm going to be making bread in a slow cooker and trying really hard not to eat it. Bread is my nemesis when it comes to low carb or keto. It's the one thing that I really truly struggle to not eat. I freaking love the stuff. It doesn't love me, my stomach doesn't love it and I could eat it all day long quite happily and it just <clears throat> makes me blow up. I'm gonna try so so hard not to eat the bloody stuff honestly and just so you know even though I try to eat low carb on my website so Google and on YouTube so YouTube search they both like carb heavy recipes it seems so I have to kind of tailor my work to what people want to watch not what I don't want to eat so that's the story there so I'm now gonna sign off from you guys and I'm gonna get into this video which you're gonna see in like I don't know three weeks time or something I don't know Honestly, it's so confusing. Anyway, see you in a bit. Okay, so this is breakfast on my last day of camping. Yesterday I didn't eat very much, which is very unlike me, especially having a walk. 
I think because I had so little sleep the night before, I was just so tired. So these are the waffles that I made you last night and I didn't eat them. <clears throat> Although I might have snuck that little crispy bit that I broke off, so I've only got that random piece. But I do have one whole one and that's the one that I want for my breakfast. So let's get rid of that random piece. So this is gonna be my breakfast. It's no longer crispy, but it's very delicious, very filling, because that there is half a cup or 65 grams or so of cheese and half an egg and some garlic powder, so it's really filling. It's very high in fat. Please don't freak out. That's what the whole low carb, high fat thing is all about. So all I'm gonna do is cut it in half. These are better warm, crisp, but life is short. Now I do this when I go camping. I'll cook a, like a packet of bacon. Um, just something that I can snack on that's low carb or you can crumble it over that lovely salad that you left at home in your fridge which is actually what the bacon was for and just adds a lovely little bit of flavour. Right these are the last of my homegrown tomatoes. These ones I picked green and they've been ripening on my kitchen windowsill. I'm gonna be really sad when this little tub is gone. It's like summer will officially be over. Oh my god my stomach just growled in anticipation there that is my monday morning camping breakfast and no cooking involved which is good because i'm too ready hungry right now to cook anything i'm going in oh yeah boys this will put hairs on your chest girls it won't really if you don't mind i'm gonna eat this in peace I'm eating again so I thought I'd better dock in and tell you what I'm doing. So I've just finished my beautiful bacon sandwich. It was so good. So so yummy. And because I'm tidying up the van I also found this bag of macadamia nuts that had like 12 nuts left in it. And there's no point taking a bag of 12 nuts home now is there? So I thought I'd just sit here and eat them too. Macadamia nuts are delicious. Very low in carbs. One of the lowest in carb nuts there are. And very high in fat which are all things you want to look out for when you're low carb. Oh, it's a hard life. I'm just sat here editing at my laptop and I suddenly got a whiff of bread cooking. So I don't want to open the lid because I don't want to let that steam out. But I don't know if you can see how much that has jumped up. It still hasn't hit the lid yet. But you can see in there, there's quite a bit going on in that pot. Unfortunately, the timer on my phone got knocked, so I reset it to one and a half hours, but I don't know if that's correct. So it's going to be a bit of guesswork on this one, but then that <laughs> pretty much sums up my whole cooking style. So it's now like quarter to 11, and I think that day of not eating very much yesterday has caught up with me. I am ravenous. This bread isn't far off being done. I think it's about half an hour to go. And I know that if I haven't got food in my belly when that bread comes out, then I'm going to eat the whole damn thing. So do not want that to happen. So I've just had a rummage and I found a packet of smoked salmon. I was supposed to have smoked salmon and scrambled eggs for my breakfast today, but I ended up having that waffle because I didn't eat it last night. And like, do you know what I mean? There's just so much food in this van. So I'm actually just going to eat a couple of pieces of smoked salmon. It's really high in fat and high in protein and it will fill my tummy up so that hopefully the evil bread monster doesn't get me. Um, is this weird, eating a piece of salmon? I don't know, it's not weird to me. I often eat salmon or ham or something like that as a meal if I'm out on the road or out and about and can't get to a proper meal. Obviously, if I had some lovely feta salad, it would be much better with that, but I don't. And I've got another stir fry bag, but I'm not cooking that up. So, oh my God, it's delicious. I am just gonna eat a little bit of this keep the monsters in my belly at bay all right my time here on this campsite is now done i have just made a freaking loaf of bread in a slow cooker i know it looks weird that's the top look how spongy it looks go camera go it kind of looks like one of those chinese buns it is cooked i promise but the bottom is golden and brown and when this cools this goes so crunchy and delicious so yeah it looks slightly odd but man that is one good loaf of bread it smells amazing so i'm gonna wrap it up in this tea towel now i'm gonna hide it in the boot while i drive away from this site so that poor liz doesn't get a half mangled loaf of bread <clears throat> it's not the best thing to be making on a weekend when you're trying to stay low carb is it but hey needs must this is my job after all right so now i'm gonna pack everything up 
I'm going to try and get out of this soggy wet field without having to call for help from the farmer and then I'm going to head up to 15 and I think I'm probably going to be stopping en route because I think it's time for coffee number two. So I've made it to Watergate Bay. I'm outside 15 in the car park. I'm a little bit early. I managed to stop at a Starbucks en route and get myself a little cheeky lap black coffee. Um, Liz isn't here yet, I don't think. I'll give her a quick bell. And then I'm gonna take you guys into 15 and you are gonna love it. The view is out of this world. It's stunning. That was blustery. Gorgeous though, stunning beach. I love this beach so much. And even on a really cold day like this, there's something about the color of the sea and the color of the sand and it just looks like summer, even though it's clearly not. So I am just cramming up on who's gonna be there and what they're gonna be talking about. So I figured you might like to know. It's called Eat Up or Meet the Media Panel. We have got Laura Rowe from Olive Magazine, Lisa Markwell from the Sunday Times and Code Magazine, Fiona Beckett from Decanter and The Guardian, and Martin Hesp from the Western Morning News. Um, get your questions answered by the panel network and enjoy 15 Cornwall drinks and nibbles. It should be quite interesting. And at the very least, we're gonna get a cracking view of Watergate Bay. <laughs> Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, some of you will know me because I'm a West Country person and I've been the editor-at-large of the Western Morning News, which actually means lots of other papers like the Western Daily Press for the last 20 years. So yeah, my name is Laura Rowe. I am editor of a food and travel magazine called Olive. Uh, so I'm Fiona Beckett. Um, I currently write um, about wine and other drinks for The Guardian. Um, hello everyone, thanks for coming up. I'm Lisa Markwell. I'm the food editor at the Sunday Times. And then we've got some mushrooms that are grown uh, in Summer Court, which is just down the road. Uh, they are grown on uh, spent coffee grounds and sawdust. They are on a little, we call it like a porridge cracker. Uh, it's basically we take all the waste, all the offcuts of the bread at the end of the night and we dry it all out, we turn it into breadcrumbs. Then we cook it again with vegetable stock uh, into a porridge. We spread it out really thin uh, and then we dry it and then we deep fry it and it ends up like a little wafer. Uh, it's just a really nice way of using up like, the breadcrumbs and things like that in the kitchen. I am very happy to be home. Oh my Lord, I'm so tired. The panel at 15 was fascinating. We talked about food trends, we talked about influencers and bloggers, and I kind of just kind of shrunk down in my chair. That was quite funny. Um, there were lots of really interesting people there, so there was a little bit of networking afterwards. It was really good fun. I'm really glad we went, it was good. But now I'm home. I've just unpacked the van. I'm gonna sort it all out in the morning. I haven't got the energy to do it now, but I am ravenous. So to finish off my day, I'm not gonna bother filming it for you because you really don't wanna watch this. I'm just gonna have the rest of that smoked salmon and I'm gonna have some scrambled eggs that I should have had for my breakfast this morning. But as you know, other things happened. So 
that's it i hope you've got some value out of this video uh fingers crossed you did the videos that you've seen me film along the way so the pepper pot stew the beef and ale stew and the slow cooker bread will all be out within the next few weeks so keep your eyes peeled for those and i'm gonna sign off have a fabulous week great weekend whatever you're up to and as always happy camping